Hey guys, Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV. And in this video, I'll be unboxing and giving you my full video review of the Sonos Move. So keep watching. Let's start with the unboxing. Now like the previous Sonos speakers, the box comes in white with the visuals of the color that you choose where I obviously went with Luna White. Now I have to let you all know that although it is called white, but looking at it in real life, comparing it next to the Sonos one, the move looked a bit more light grey, so keep that in mind. Looking inside the box, first there is the welcome guide. Next, there is the small brown box where in there, you'll find the charging dock which is connected to a power cable which I'll show you later on how and where to place the move on. Then finally, you'll find the Sonos Move with a nice little drawstring bag which had a cloth-like material to protect the speaker. Now let's look at the build quality. The Sonos Move's dimensions are 9.44 inches high. 6.29 inches wide and 4.96 inches in depth so it's not too small neither did i find it too big in terms of its weight it weighs exactly at 3 kgs and i love the implementation of putting the handle at the back so you can easily grab it and go instead of typically carrying the bluetooth speaker by the sides so yes good job sonos now it has a cylinder shape with a metal grills around the speaker then at the bottom there is the rubberized material on the speaker's base making it sturdier if you place it on a table and making it hard to accidentally knock the speaker down and also to make the speaker drop proof in case you guys drop the speaker like this which I love tech items so much to do such drop tests but I'll take Sonos word for it based on some of the videos that I've saw and of course some of the videos that Sonos did like spilling wine, spraying ketchup and even electrocuting the speaker yeah they did that and on top of that the speaker is also IP56 rating that stands up to humidity, rain, snow one day Malaysia, just one day can we have snow? Hmm? Next, let's dive in further into the speakers since we can't really see them of course. First, there is a single downward firing tweeter for a nice high frequency range of sound and because it is facing downwards, it also means that it will disperse sound evenly as opposed to a singular direction and then there's also a single mid woofer that gives you a really good balance of mids and quite a powerful deep and extremely rich bass and all of the speakers are powered with two class D digital amplifiers built in to give you the best output of sound without having any distortion even at its maximum volume. Now looking at the pots and buttons looking on top, firstly those tiny little holes are the microphone arrays for voice assistant as like the other latest Sonos products you can configure that where I will post a workaround down below as it is not natively available in Malaysia. Don't blame Sonos okay, it's Google. Yo Uncle G, what's up? And of course you can turn off the microphone if you guys want to as well. Then also on top, you'll find three buttons over there which is the play and pause button and the volume buttons on the sides. Now like the Sonos One or even the Sonos Arc that I've reviewed, these buttons are capacitive touch controls where they are not physical buttons to keep the speaker to look very minimal indeed. Then at the back, there's also another three more buttons where on top, there is the power button which is the very first speaker from Sonos to even have a power button. Then there's also a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth switch button, also the very first for Sonos products. Then of course, the similar pairing and joining button which is available for all of the other Sonos products as they have been implementing that in the other speakers to ensure a swift pairing. And finally, down below, there is a USB-C port and the charging connection for you to easily dock your Sonos Move into the charging dock which is my preferred way to charge the speaker as opposed to using the USB-C but it is nice that Sonos has included this option. Now looking at the Sonos Moves connectivity, for those of you who have been complaining about the lack of Bluetooth connectivity, 
you can come down now. Because other than the Apple AirPlay 2 and Wi-Fi connection, which I still prefer, the Sonos Move also comes with Bluetooth, where if the speaker is out of your Wi-Fi's range, it will be able to connect it like a Bluetooth speaker, where you'll need to press the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi switcher at the back to change it to the Bluetooth mode, where the indicator on top will be in blue. But please keep in mind that the Sonos S2 app will not work if it's not connected to Wi-Fi, which to be honest, I did not find it very useful to use anyway after it has been paired, which I'm going to show a little later. Now, before going into my sound experience, let's talk about what makes the speaker stand out and of course, its main key features. So other than all the added connectivity features and the IP weather resistant rating, this speaker has a built-in true play tuning, where in case you guys do not know, that is Sonos technology to tuning your speakers according to your surrounding to get the best audio quality. Now, previously, the true play tuning can only be done and tuned with iOS devices. And now, only for the Sonos Move, it will tune the sound automatically according to where the speaker has been placed. So for example, if the speaker is placed in an area where something is blocking in front of the speaker, it will take the speaker about 15 seconds to recalibrate and of course to give you a better sound projection from the sides since something is blocking right in front. And that, my friends, is a whole new level of a better speaker technology when it comes to the sound tuning on the Sonos Move. So bravo Sonos, and I hope that this will be implemented in the other upcoming devices as well. So yes, I don't have to borrow an iOS device from my buddy Vernon again when I tuned the Sonos Arc when I was reviewing it, and you don't have to get an iOS device. Like, ever. And the other cool and key feature is the fact that you can extend the speaker to be a stereo pair and also connect it with other Sono systems except for the Sono Sub. Now as for setup, it has a similar experience with the other Sono speaker system where as soon as you download and open the Sonos S2 app, you will see a pop-up that the move has been found. Next, connect it to your Wi-Fi. After that, press the pairing button when the app prompts you to and you'll get the Sonos move added to the app. Now, if it requires an update, just follow the instructions accordingly and sign into your account and you're done. Now, after it has been added and updated, you can go through the app for the additional features like checking out the current music being played, the EQ adjustments, toggle the auto true play tuning on or off, volume limit and the toggle for status light and touch controls. So yes, that's the setup and the app walkthrough. Now, before we go forward, if you are liking this video so far, do give this video a nice big thumbs up. That would be very much appreciated. And now, let me give you my take on the sound quality. Well, guess what? It's really, really good. Now, I've tested various music genre and there wasn't a single time that I felt that the speaker was lacking in. It had great loudness with no distortion even at its highest volume. It had amazing bass without sounding too muddy as it projected clearly when I was listening to EDM or even metal genre. And if you're in the mood for something slow and soothing, listening to some jazz and acoustic guitar music also sounded very crisp and clear as well. So having tested other Sono speakers, the best way to describe this speaker is that the fact that the sound quality is placed between the Sonos 1 and the Sonos 5 as it surely surpasses the Sonos 3 as I found that this speaker was not only great to fill up the whole studio room but also really loud when I placed it in my bathroom. Like really loud. Then finally, since it is a portable speaker, let's look at the battery life where Sonos claim it can give you up to 10 hours at medium volume and based on my test, I got a total of 9.5 hours at almost volume at maximum, both on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection as I did not want to go all the way up to annoy my neighbours. But yes, the battery life was great on the Sonos Move overall when I use it for both situations. And when it comes to charging, I got from 0 to 36% in 25 minutes of charge, which was also a huge plus. So as usual, with all the good on the Sonos Move, instead of calling the next topic a drawback, let's see how the Sonos Move can improve on the second generation. Firstly, I think that it would be a bonus to have an AUX port to have a wired connection with your smartphone. Of course, until all smartphones in the world have no headphone jack at least. 
And I think that it would be cool to have a USB port at the back or even a micro SD card slot just for the sake of having other external music playback options and also an improved IP rating to have a speaker to be fully submergible in water would be great for clumsy people or weird people who want to listen to music underwater. Do you guys do that? Well, other than that, I just can't think of any other drawbacks where in my humble opinion, that's that. So in conclusion, if you guys are looking for a really good speaker which comes with a really premium build and excellent sound that has high quality music streaming both on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and of course to add this into your existing Sonos speaker system, then yes, this speaker should be for you as it is a highly recommended speaker by me which can be used no matter if you are an Android or an Apple user. Now, as for the price here in Malaysia, the Sonos Move retails at 2,109 ringgit and you can get it at trysonos.my to get yourself one, which I'll leave links down below as it is also available in black as well. Alright guys, do let me know if you guys have anything to ask about the Sonos Move down at the comment section below and would you guys get it? Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and helped you in making your purchase decision. And if you did, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up not thumbs down. Like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Whoop.